BigCityPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Countdown to Two-A-Days series. Our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we'll be answering about that team in our August 16th preseason football preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we are talking about the Eastland Mavericks. Yeah, the Mavericks are another team uh, in the area with the first-year head coach. Bobby Schumann has, has taken over the job to replace James Morton, who uh, stepped down uh, this past uh, – just just a couple of months ago. Uh, and he's taken over a team that went 1-9 and nine last year, but they do have a good group back. Uh, they gained a lot of experience throughout that season. 18 of their 24 lettermen return, including eight starters on both sides of the ball. So a decent nucleus to build off for Coach Schumann. Uh, I mean, the big questions they're going to have are the questions that a lot of teams have when they're in the first year with a new coach. They got to, uh, and we'll address obviously some of those uh, here in a few minutes, but uh, should be an interesting season as we watch Coach Schumann kind of lay the foundation for his program this year. All right. Before we jump into our look at the Eastland Mavericks tonight, uh, we want to remind you, YouTubers, to please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button and then hit that little bell that'll pop up after you do that to get notifications from YouTube every time we come up with a new podcast here at Big Country Preps. That'll be a great way for you to follow along with our Countdown to Two-A-Day series, which features a look at one area team per day, counting it all the way down to the outset of Two-A-Days, which begin on July 31st, right around the corner. All right. With that, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's talk about this Eastland team and, and some of the big questions they face. And I think one of the biggest is just what can we expect from the Bobby Schumann era here in at Eastland? Uh, that, I mean, that Eastland had, it was just such a stable situation for the past you know seven years with with Coach Morton out there, uh, who who did a great job during his time there, uh, took them to some some pretty uh, pretty nice heights, and now they've got a new voice for the first time in a long time. So I mean, the big question is just what is he going to bring schematically? What the kind of expectations? Is he going to have in terms of, of what he wants to do offensively, defensively, and those sorts of things, weight room? I mean, anytime you have a new coach, there's always going to be some adjustment period, you know, some changes made that you have to kind of uh, adjust to and, and you know, the, that that learning curve. And uh, that's the part I'm interested to see. They've got a good group back with 18 lettermen, uh, but that group, everyone in that group is going to have to kind of uh, adjust its, uh, it, you know, its expectations and, and things to what Coach Schumann's wanting to do. So that's going to be a big question and, and probably a big key uh, to what this team can achieve this year. One thing that they absolutely must improve on over last year, and this is a big question for Eastland this year, can they improve in short yardage situations? Can they get a push up front and uh, score in the red zone? get first downs in short yardage situations. This was a big weakness for Eastland last year, and it really created a lot of problems for them. Uh, in short yardage, they just they just didn't have that push up front to consistently move the ball and move the chains. Can they do that? They're still not very big up front, that, so that, that'll be a big issue. They're just going to have to find a way, and uh, we'll, we, we shall see. But that's going to be probably the biggest key for them to move ahead this year, in my opinion, will be the performance of that smallish offensive line trying to find a way to get a push and get them some yardage and short yardage situations. Yeah, I think that'll be interesting because they do return a quarterback in, in Isaiah Hayes, who got a lot of good experience last year. Jay Osnick was one of the best receivers in all of the area before they kind of had to move him around a little bit. So they've they've got some weapons in that passing game, but the running game is definitely going to be a big key. Another big key, and this may be this goes right up there, in my opinion, with the running game, as far as the biggest question this team has is can they get better on the defensive side of the football? That was a group that really struggled to get stops last year, allowed almost 43 points per game, and that had a lot to do with the, the one and nine record. They just couldn't get off the field. They couldn't, uh, you know, make the stops they needed to make to, to help their offense out a little bit. Uh, and I think that's going to be the big key is with eight starters back, they've got a lot of guys that that, that, have, that have played. I mean, these guys have varsity experience and they're, they're making, uh, replacing some of the guys they lost with, with, uh, with call-ups from a six and four JV team. So some kids who've experienced some success. Uh, the big question is, can they make enough strides defensively to get where they want to get uh, to where they can get back in the playoff picture? I think this is a district that uh, affords that opportunity, but they're going to have to make uh, some progress in several key areas, defense being one of them. I'll tell you what, if they if they get that push up front and can, can actually start running the football a little bit better than they did last year, their the, their defense will automatically yeah. be better. It changes a lot. Yep. Yeah. So it changes the entire outlook of the game. It really yeah, does. No question. All right. Let's take a quick look at Eastland's schedule for 2023. It is by no means easy. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, far from it. Non district portion of that schedule on on August 25th. It's at Wall. Then they start with uh, their home opener against Clyde on September 1st, a road date against the defending state 
two A D one champions, Holly. That's on September 8th. That's on the road. Then they face a good Breckenridge team on the road on September 15th. And then they'll face Jim Ned on September 22nd. And that Jim Ned team should be better as well. Then they've got an open date on the 29th before jumping into district. Yeah, just an absolutely brutal non-district schedule. We we talked about the same thing last year about how with with a young group, they were just going to have to kind of take their lumps and, and try to, uh, you know, make progress where they could. It's going to be a similar situation this year. You're just going to have to try to uh, you know, take positives where you can as you go into district. And then they open district with another tough one. They October 6th, after their open date, they uh, host Jacksboro, who's expected to be one of the teams competing at the top of that district. The following week, they go to Merkel and what will be a very big game for their playoff hopes. Then on October 20th, they host Millsap go to Dublin on the 27th and another just really big uh, district game for them. And they wrap up with what should be an outstanding Comanche team on November 3rd at home. So you look at that schedule, uh, Merkel and Dublin are both huge games. And unfortunately for them, both of those are on the roads. So they're going to have to win some key road games if they want to get back in the playoff picture. That's, uh, you, and you got to get through that non-district portion healthy too. I mean, you have That's to have true. healthy bodies. Yeah, and uh, they're going to, uh, those teams are going to, they're going to beat on you. Those are some really good teams. So, they have to avoid the medical tent. That's going to be another key for, for Eastland. Yeah. With that, it's about time to wrap up tonight's countdown to two a days edition, the Eastland Mavericks. Before we do that, we want to remind you that August 16th is the big day here at Big Country Preps. That's the day we release our annual preseason football preview, which is the most comprehensive look at Big Country football of any media source in the state of Texas. We'll have more than 40 team previews for 11 men. We'll have a six-man preview as well. We'll have more than 40 player features. We'll have opinion pieces. We'll have predictions. We'll have stats. We'll have video. You name it. We're going to have it. It's the biggest look at Big Country football from anybody. Don't forget to sign up August 16th. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for this episode of our Countdown to Two-A-Day series. And make sure you come back tomorrow when we'll be highlighting the Merkel Badgers here at countryprepscom